I picked up a camcorder and I think you should too. Cheers. If you grew up in the late 90s, well, any part of the 90s actually, slash early 2000s, then you most likely had one of these part of your family vacations, milestones, and all the embarrassing moments. Flash forward 20 years and I'm wondering, where could I buy one of these? This is a VHS camera. At first I was guilty of buying all these presets, VHS overlays, and all of that stuff. It's just like film presets to film. It's just not the same. You could try to replicate it via digital overlays or assets and it just, quality is not the same. The timestamps, all that stuff, it's, it's really not the same. I've been guilty of trying to buy those in the past. So I hopped on eBay and did a lot of research. Do I need one? Yes, no. But how sick would it be if I was able to find a camcorder? My wife picked up one of these $20 digi cams, digital cams from Amazon. And it's great for the size. It takes a micro SD card. I use it here and there. So it's great for the size. I mean, look at the comparison between Digicam that takes an SD card and an actual VHS i8 camcorder. It's okay. Again, still not the same thing. It's still not what I wanted, especially the battery. It comes with two batteries and they're both just utter garbage. Quality wise, trying to film just a normal bar with friends and it doesn't pick up anything that has a light on it, uh, it just blows it out. So for certain things like vacation, I do bring this on vacation with me because it's just so small and easy. I don't care, I can throw it in a bag and I'm not worried about it too much. Back to eBay we go. More debating of yes, of no. Do I need to spend the money? Do I need one? Back and forth, I finally pulled the trigger on the Sony 330 Handycam Vision. It's an actual height camera that takes height tapes. You can find them on Amazon. And let's see if I could. It takes an high eight tape. Throw it in there. Yeah, love it. I spent about $240 on this thing, if I remember correctly. It came with an original Sony battery and charger. After charging it for quite a bit of time, I quickly found out that it just didn't hold a charge. Turned on and everything, so I was very glad that I bought it and I was able to test that everything did work, but the battery itself was just so old it didn't hold a charge. Back to the internet I go. Yet again, I'm on Amazon trying to find a current replacement battery for the original Sony battery. I got to thinking these replacement batteries look a lot like my Atmos monitor battery specifically the Ninja V. This is that exact battery. I wonder if this will fit. Sure enough, pop it in, works perfectly. Number one, did I save a couple dollars? Yes, and two, I didn't have to buy another set of batteries, chargers, all that stuff. As content creators, photographers, videographers, all that stuff, Lord knows we already have plenty of freaking chargers, cords, batteries in our life that we don't need to add more. These take Hi8 tapes, as I mentioned, like this. You can find them on Amazon. I had bought a two pack and I've only used the one. I kind of treat it like a memory card and I record on it. Then I rip it to my computer and then just rewind and write back over old footage. For me, there's no sense, again, in collecting more tapes as if they were hard drives and just have an, a stockpile of old footage. I haven't even been through one full tape yet, which is pretty good. I think this says 120. So what does that mean, 120 minutes? Oh, yeah. SP mode, you get two hours, and LP mode, you get four hours. No 
clue what those are. Anywho, anyway, speaking of how I get the tape from being on the camera in the physical world and get it to the digital world like my laptop, I bought a converter, AV to USB cable. You have your audio and video cables on this side that plug into your camera. The other side is USB. Two options really quick. I can either rip it straight to QuickTime. I'm currently finding that QuickTime, I'm able to get the audio from it as well. The other program I use is OBS, which is a little bit more in depth and has a lot more settings than just QuickTime. QuickTime is just a straight record, but I'm having trouble figuring out why my audio file or the audio isn't recording to the OBS as well. So if I do want the audio from the footage, then I'll just have to do it in QuickTime. And if I don't care for audio, then I'll probably just keep using the OBS. Once I rip the footage, I will then toss it in Premiere Pro, cut it up, resize it, add overlays, all that good stuff. I don't remember how I did the, uh, how I was able to get the timestamp and playback title onto the ripped footage. I don't remember what the heck I did, so it's been driving me nuts as of late. It's been really fun so far. I've shot some personal things with it. I've shot a handful of hockey content for the NHL on it, and as well as I started implementing it into my elopements. You can add on a, a video recap from your wedding, and I will shoot it on VHS. So that's been fun and cool to implement that into my personal, but also the business side of things. It's also, anytime I have it on me, around my neck, it's obviously a conversation piece of, holy cow, is that a VHS camera? Or holy crap, I haven't seen one of those since the 90s and all that stuff. So of course, it's always fun to have a conversation piece and then talk about it. Hi8 Handycam or even Digicam. They're both great little options to have on you at all times, whatever it may be. And again, pretty lo-fi look to it um, that you may not be able to capture on your brand new iPhone 15 Pro. Open it up, hit record. Pretty easy, straightforward. I'm a creator through and through, so I love all the different avenues in which I can express myself, whether it's photo, video, film, top of the line, mirrorless equipment like the Canon R3, all the way down to my lo-fi 40 year old film cameras, you name it. I just absolutely love creating and have some fun with it. We'll see you in the next one. Cheers.